Hi, Brady. Hi, Emily. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Okay. <laughs> Sugars. Um, Miss Zepka. Yes, dear. Okay, so we have a little problem. Well, it's not technically little; it's a big problem. Um, oh no! Gary's computer will not charge. Who is the? Is this Sapphire? Yeah. <laughs> Whose computer won't? Haley. <laughs> well, you know it's Haley. Of course, it it's not. Charge. I'm on the phone with her right now. <laughs> She's it's, the, it's, the, it's the person. She called. Doesn't it. like her. She was like, <laughs> she was being mean to it, wasn't she? Was she talking man, mean to it? Were you being mean to your computer? No. Oh, she was too. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> well, I guess she'll just have to use yours today. Looks like you're gonna use mine today, Haley. You better put in a help desk if it's not going to charge. Do you want me to put you in a help desk? Yeah. Okay. What are you two doing together? Don't your parents have any sense? No, but we're not together. I'm on the phone with her. Oh, it sounds like she's right there. Yeah, no, she's right by the computer, but like, <laughs> I'm on the phone with her. Oh, okay. That's funny. Sapphire, like joy for well, shoot, I don't know how that's going to work for her then. Does she, can she do it on her phone? Uh, can you do it on your phone? I, I download. She would download Google Classroom? Download Google Meets. You can do that and then join. That's another way. Ms. Epco, you'll probably have to email her the link to the. Okay, I can do that. That's not a problem. All right, I will email it to her right now. Okay. Oops. Oops. Okay, it's sending to her right now. All right, so hopefully that'll work for her. And if not, um, just let her know, Sapphire, that I record all of our meet, so she should be able to uh, watch what we do and how we do it if she can't, you know, somehow get there today. Oh, and um, yeah, we all can send her the meet. She'll be bombarded with <laughs> the meet uh, link. Anyway, all right, so let's get started on our warm-up. Uh, basically today we're going to do the warm up. You guys will probably turn those in because they're due. Um, and you might as well just get one less thing off your plate. And then we're going to talk about table setting and etiquette. And, uh, we'll do that for the next couple meets that we've had, that we have before break. So, um, let's start with that warm up, and then we'll have you turn that in would be great. All right, let's get to it here. Okay. Here we go. All right, so today's question is C1, where do you properly, properly place a napkin while setting the table? And you could use right, left, uh, you know, if you are looking at an object, you could say it's right next to this or that. But just give me your best guess if you're, like, completely clueless. Got about a minute left. Hello. Ms. Epka? Yeah. Hey, Lisa, Haley got it. it. Oh, she did? Okay. Fantastic. I was going to say, if she doesn't come today, she'll ruin her streak. All 
Okay. I'm going to um, load up some things while you guys are still working on this for class, just so we have them ready to go. Okay, you should be finishing up now on your um, warm up and getting those, uh, making sure you have caption ends, complete sentences, and then get them into uh, Google Classroom so that that's one less thing you have to worry about, okay? And I'm just, I don't like to put things in early just so that I know that you're going to work on them in class and not elsewhere. So um, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so, all right. Okay, so time is up for those warm-ups. Um, so I first want to uh, talk about, let me pull this up here. Table setting and etiquette. So if you go to Google Classroom, I'll show you since I was right there. I want you to open this formal place setting. And what I want you to do is just take a couple minutes. I, there are seven errors. And so, oh, sugar muffins, I put the wrong one in there. Hold on. <laughs> I got the wrong one. Oh, you got to love it. Okay, hold on. Sorry, I screwed that up. I'm taking it away because it's the one I don't want. I grabbed the wrong one. Okay. Hang tight. Today, Monday, <laughs> it seems like my day is going uh, like it's Monday. Oh, shoot. Was I don't know if that's the one I want. Don't click on this yet because I'm trying to if it's the one I wanted or not. Now, dang it all. Ah. All right, give me a second. Why can't I find the one I want? Okay, I thought I had the one I needed right where I wanted it. And of course, I don't, which then makes it difficult. Okay, hold on. It's right here. There we go. Bada boom, bada bing. All right, there we go. I think I got it now. Sorry about that. Things happen. I don't know if you can hear my dogs wrestling right next to me. Ah. Crazy. All right, here it comes. Sorry about that. Got to roll with the punches as we get them. Okay, so once this opens up, I want you to open it. And I want you to see if you can figure out where all the seven errors are. Okay, so I'm going to pull this up. Here we go. There you go. And I want you to fill out what you think the seven errors are. Okay, so I'll give you until, let's say, 145 do that and then uh, we're going to look at the actual um, correct way to do something like that questions you got for me hopefully i didn't confuse you too terribly haley's here yay excellent haley are you able to do any work or are you just listening You guys can hear me, right? Can somebody verify that they can hear my voice? Oh, you think you, okay, very good. Yes, we can hear you, Miss Epple. Oh, okay. 
good. Okay. Three more minutes. Is there anybody that needs more time? Do I need to wait till the 45? Are you ready to go? <clears throat> Is there anybody that's still working? Okay, so tell me something that you're pretty sure you have correct. Anybody have any idea about something that they know is incorrect? Yeah, you can unmute. Of course you can. The spoon's on the napkin. Okay. So where should the spoon go? Uh, by the other utensils. Okay. All right. What, what's another thing that you thought was wrong? Anybody? And yes, you can unmute. <laughs> yes, you can. Or you can put it in the chat. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to show you a picture of how things should be. And then I'll go over the key specifically. So what I would like you to do is when I give a right answer or when you look at the picture and notice something that you have 
or maybe you left some blank, uh, look at the picture I'm going to show you and make those corrections, but I want the corrections highlighted, okay? So let me show you the picture, and you look at it and make corrections, but don't change your answers. I want you just to highlight the answers that you add. Okay, so there's a picture. So look at your um, worksheet and see if you can't indicate some other things that might be wrong because basically only one person found one error and there's, se there's seven of them. What else can you tell me was wrong? <clears throat> what else is wrong in the picture? Like, where should the teacup go? Where's the cup and saucer? Is it in the right spot? No. Okay, so where should it go? Uh, bottom. Bottom right-hand corner, okay. Um, Henry, I believe that's who responded. Um, wasn't it Henry? Or was it? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Okay, so you are correct about the spoon. So the spoon should be on the right of the knife. Uh, what about the fork? Where should that go? Look at the picture. To the left of it. Okay, so the fork should be to the left of the plate. Um... Should the fork be on the napkin? No. No. Okay, so that's, we're up to three. Um, where should the glass be? The right-hand side. Okay, and they also indicate it as the tip of the knife. So the glass uh, should be on, right, like, right above the knife there. So that's up, now we're up to four. Where is the bread, or, bread and butter plate supposed to be? The left side. Okay, it's the left side right above the fork, okay? Uh, cup and saucer, I think we did that one, so that's six. And then um, the opened end of the napkin should be towards the plate. In this picture, it's opposite that, so I'm not really sure why that is. But it should be, the opening should be towards the plate. Okay, so those were your seven. Let me go over them again. Spoon should be on the right of the knife. The fork should be to the left of the plate. Fork to the right of the napkin, not on it. Glass at the tip of the knife. Bread and butter plate above fork on the left of dinner plate. Cup and saucer to the right of the knife and spoon. And number seven is open end of napkin should be towards the plate. So those would be your seven errors that were given in the, uh, in the worksheet that we just did. Okay. All right. So now I want to go back to Google Classroom and I have a video that I want you guys to watch. And it's on manners and etiquette. If you got the table setting done, turn that in. You can watch the video back if you need the answers. But you're now going to go to Edpuzzle, and you're going to watch the video on table manners. And there's questions and answers along the way that you'll fill out. And then when you get done, uh, just in the chat, just say you're done. And then I'll assign the last and final thing that I'm going to have you work on today. So you're going to watch this video on Edpuzzle. And um, do the Q&As and then come back to the chat and let me know when you're done. Questions that you have for me? Okay. So that's what I need you to work on now.
Okay, so I have a solution. It's not letting you guys watch the pu that puzzle. Anyone getting it to work? Anybody get it to work? Okay. So lucky for you all, I have this already on um, something else, just in case this happened. So <laughs> I'm going to go grab it and pull it up, and then we'll watch it from there. Okay. So no worries. What in the heck? Okay. Here we go. Let me just go grab it. Just takes me a one second. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so I just have to come back and present it in a different way, and then um, then you'll be able to see it. Just got to remember how I did this. Okay. All right. So hey, not Haley, Sapphire. Since you and I talked today, and or Henry, will you guys let me know if you can see it and hear it, please? And up next, we're going to be talking about table manners and how to avoid embarrassing yourself when you dine out with other people. Can you hear it? Can you guys hear it? Hello? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we go. When you hear the words manners or etiquette, I know sometimes you might just think of, you know, rules that you blindly have to follow just for the heck of it. But actually, that's not the case. At their core, manners are just about being considerate and respectful to the people around you. Table manners are particularly important because, well, let's face it, there's a lot more ways to gross someone out when you're eating with them. You know, when you're, you know, slurping and chomping and burping and splattering versus when you're just like sitting next to them on a train reading a newspaper. Because of that, table manners have always been a good tell about someone's overall refinement, their upbringing, and their sort of sensitivity and kind of self-awareness around other people. So my thought is, even if you don't practice impeccable table manners at home, it is important to know how to behave properly for those important occasions. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some easy to follow guidelines that will help keep your table manners on point throughout an entire meal. Sitting down at the table. So when you're just about to sit down at the table, that's a great time for you to silence your phone and put it away. You don't want to be that guy whose phone is going off during a nice dinner. The other thing you want to do is make sure and wait for everyone to gather around the table and to about, about to be seated before you sit down yourself. And you may want to take a cue from the host or hostess. The first thing you do when you sit down is generally put your napkin on your lap. And in really formal settings, you would actually wait for an indication from the host or hostess to do this. but in most settings, you're probably safest just to put your napkin on your lap when you first sit down so you don't forget. Of course, it should never go in your shirt. You know, you should keep it in your lap, but your napkin is your friend. So feel free to use it throughout the meal to blot your mouth and keep it clean. Body language. When you're sitting down, your posture should be upright. You should try to avoid, you know, slouching or leaning way back in your chair, keeping your elbows off the table. So this is kind of a misunderstood rule. Of course, it, it isn't acceptable to Put your you know elbows on the table while you're eating and in general you want to kind of keep your free hand on your lap um, while you're eating but it is actually acceptable to put your elbows on the table in between courses when you're not eating and particularly after the meal if you're just um, enjoying conversation with the other diners you can put your elbows on the table lean in um, and it's totally fine the place setting Oh, the place setting. Nothing gives people greater anxiety than the place setting. You sit down and there's all these glasses and plates and implements. You don't know what's going on. It's totally overwhelming. 
Now, the first thing you want to figure out is where's my bread plate and where's my water glass? Because you, you, know, you don't want to be like sipping off someone else's glass or stealing someone else's bread. So I like to use this trick that my friend Dave showed me that's really handy. Just remember B and D. So B for bread and D for drink. And that always kind of tells you what side everything is on. When it comes to understanding which glass is for what, honestly, you shouldn't have to worry about it because most likely when you get there to the table, your water glass is probably already going to be filled or it will be pretty obvious which one the glass is. And if you do have multiple wine glasses, generally that means you're probably going to be in a place that has servers or a uh, sommelier. Um, and then the server or sommelier is going to be the one who's going to fill up your glass anyway. So you, you don't need to really think about it. When it comes to silverware, there's something you got to understand. First of all, if the person who laid it out actually knows what they're doing, then each utensil should relate to the order that the dishes are being presented in. You know, anything that's served on a flat plate should be eaten with the fork and anything that's served in a bowl should be eaten with the spoon. The only thing you really need to remember is that you start with the utensils closest to you and work from your outside in. Those utensils on the top uh, above your plate are for dessert. Don't worry about them for now. On your left side, you're probably gonna have some forks. On your right side, you're probably gonna have some knives, a spoon or two, and then maybe a funny miniature fork looking thing that's a seafood fork essentially, starting the meal. So as much as you might want to just tear into your food because you're hungry when it first arrives in front of you, you've got to wait until everyone else is served. And in really formal dinners, you would actually wait to get a cue from the host or hostess, but usually you're safe if everyone is served. In the Western world, there are sort of two acceptable ways to hold your fork and knife. There's the American style and the continental style. With the American style, you hold your fork in your dominant hand, kind of like a pencil, and then when it comes time to cut something, you switch hands. And that's why this is sometimes called the zigzag style also. And you use your dominant hand to cut with the knife. Cut a single bite of food and then switch the fork back to your dominant hand to take a bite. And while you're doing that, if you want to uh, set the knife down, you can place it at the top of your plate with the blade facing down towards you. With the continental style, you keep your fork in your non-dominant hand and then you still cut with your dominant hand, but you don't switch them. According to Emily Post, either way is fine. This is actually what I do because it's a little bit easier. You're not switching back and forth. And of course, when you're eating with your fork and not cutting, you should be keeping your other hand in your lap. And remember, don't reach across the table. If something is close enough to you that you can grab it and you're not reaching over another diner, you can feel free to reach out and get it. But otherwise, you're gonna have to ask the, um, someone else to pass it to you. Can you please pass the salt? And on that note, if someone asks you to pass the salt, you always give them the pepper as well and vice versa. Finger foods. Yes, believe it or not, it is okay actually to eat certain foods with your fingers, even at a formal dinner. And, you know, obvious finger foods like corn on the cob, uh, you know, chicken wings or uh, ribs or uh, pizza or tacos, you can eat with your fingers, but you have to use your judgment. If it does look like it's going to be really messy, maybe try to use a fork if you can. Chewing and talking. You probably already know that you're not supposed to talk with your mouth full of food. And of course you want to avoid making loud smacking noises or chewing with your mouth open so you bother other diners. And the easiest thing to do is really just to take smaller manageable bites, especially knowing that you're probably going to be in conversation throughout the meal. Now, if you need to get something out of your mouth while you're eating, you can use your fingers um, as long as you're discreet. Just try to cover your mouth with your hand or a napkin so other diners don't see. And then just quickly put it on the edge of your plate, taking a drink. So while it's not completely a no-no to take a drink with food in your mouth, it's best to probably make, not make it obvious. Also, you may want to wipe your mouth if you've been eating before you take a drink off your glass. Otherwise, your glass can look like a crime scene. Eating foods you don't like. Okay, so what if you're at someone's house for dinner and they serve something you don't like? Well, the polite thing to do is actually to, to serve yourself one or two bites and just try it um, and just hope that they're not too insistent about you uh, loading up with seconds. Excusing yourself from the table. If you need to get up and go to the bathroom during the meal or you know go away from the table for any other reason, you don't need to ask for permission and you certainly don't need to tell everybody why you're going. Man, I've been drinking espresso all day and I need to pee like a racehorse. You know, all you really need to do is just say, excuse me, I'll be right back. 
When you leave the table, fold up your napkin and place it to the left of your plate. And it's best to, you don't need to completely fold it into its original swan shape or whatever, but it's best to kind of fold it over so that you can kind of conceal any unsightly food stains. Being part of the group. Again, dinner is meant to be social, so make sure that you participate in the dinner conversation. And also take note if you find that you're you know, eating much faster or much slower than the rest of the group. Checking your phone at the table. Hopefully this goes without saying, but checking your phone at the table is, or using it, is just very, very disrespectful to the other diners. So if you, for some reason, you do get an urgent text or call that you have to attend to right then, then you've got to quietly excuse yourself from the table and take care of that without bothering the other diners. Ending the meal. Throughout the meal, if you're just sort of pausing or taking a break from eating, you can put your fork and knife like this to show that you're not finished yet. And most servers uh, will sort of universally recognize that. If you are actually finished with your food, what you do is you place your fork and your knife at an angle, um, sort of like a, a 10 and four, with the handles facing at four and the tips facing at 10, if you think of a clock face. And then what you'll do is you'll place your napkin to the left of your plate, um, or if it's been cleared already, you could just place your napkin where your plate was. Not everyone is gonna be offended if you don't follow these guidelines, but the way I see it is that once you learn basic table manners, you see that they're so easy to keep up that just why not do them? Especially when you know a lot of diners will appreciate that, that you're being conscientious enough to have good table manners. All right, guys, hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions about dining etiquette, or if you have some tips you wanna share of your own, leave it in the comments. Okay. So tell me one thing that stood out in your mind when it comes to that video. Like what's something that you, um, you know, that resonated with you or that you were like, oh, I didn't know that or that's interesting or something like that. What did you come up with? Like what was, uh, what were they talking about? The B and the D, what was that about? Hello, anyone can answer a question for me, please? What was the B and the D about? Do you remember? Do you remember how he tried to get you to remember to put the fork on the left side? Anyone remember that? Foster positions. Okay, so I think Gavin's referring to my B and the D. So when you make a, um, almost like you are saying okay to somebody and do that with both hands, uh, one side of your left side of your hand is formulating a B and the right side is a D. So that should help you remember that the bread plate goes on the left and the drink cup goes on the right. Um, some other things that were mentioned is that the, a fork is spelled with four letters, just like the word left. So that should help you remember that the fork is always on the left side. And a spoon that is, and spoon and knife have five letters, the same as the word right has five letters. So they all go on the right hand side. Um, how should you eat with your silverware? Should you go from the outside in or the inside out? What should you do? Don't be too chatty now. Don't all speak at once. Outside in. Thank you, Gavin. Okay. So just some helpful hints there to go over um, that are important. What were some of the things they said about uh, cell phones? What were some of their thoughts and ideas about that? Carolyn, what were some of the ideas that they had about cell phones? Not to like bring it with you like to the table to like keep it out of like the area and stuff. Okay, good. Um, what if you need to use the restroom, what should you do? Uh, Nazaya, what did you do? You have to go to the bathroom or something.
Haley, do you remember? Uh, you excuse yourself. <laughs> right. What about passing? If someone asked for the salt, what did you do? You sh should pass the salt and pepper because okay. yep. that's just what? common sense. Yep. Well, more than likely, they're going to want the pepper also. Um, I'm just trying to think back of some of the other things that they said. You are, when you're silverware, when you're done with something, how should your sil silverware appear on the plate? You remember that one? Sapphire, do you remember that one? Oh, 10 and 4. Okay, thank you, Emily. That's correct. And then if you were not done, how should your silverware appear? Know that one? It's kind of crisscross, kind of, you know, covering the food sort of saying, you know, don't take my food, I'm not done. Okay, so um, the last part of the class that I'm going to have us work on is... Uh, the um, demo page, okay? And um, this this Ed Puzzle Table Manners, I'm just going to get rid of that. I'll figure out what went wrong. Maybe you guys have to, I don't know. <laughs> I'll figure it out. But um, I'm just going to delete that out because that's you weren't able to do that, so there's no point of keeping it there. Um, I'm going to put the uh, demo, and I demoed by crust. And um, I don't know if you remember last year, but you each made a pie to give thanks to your family and to contribute something at the holidays. And so I'm asking for you to do that again uh, this, this time. If you do uh, make a pie or what have you, uh, take pictures of yourself making it. And um, I'll give you extra credit for doing that. Um, I made... A coconut cream pie, but the recipe that I'm giving you does give you um, two uh, enough for two pie crusts. So, like if you were doing an apple pie, let's say, um, you could use the extra dough for the top. And some of you did that last year. You made an apple pie or cherry pie, and then you did like a lattice on the top, or you just put the top on and put some holes in it. Um, remember, um, if you're going to do a pie that doesn't have a top, typically they want you to cook the crust first um, and then put your filling in or whatever. Um, if it's cooked, like my coconut cream was cooked on the stove. And so once the crust was done, I was able to put that into the pie shell. Um, but other pies may not. So you really need to read directions if you're going to use something different. But the crust will make two. So you can either put one in the freezer for next year or down the road, or you have a topper to make your lattice on top of the pie. Okay. So do you guys have any questions for me about the lab or anything like that? Oh, good, Gavin. Uh, I can't wait to hear about it. Are you gonna make a pie? Well, if you if you show yourself cooking, take some photos, will you? So that um, I can see how you're doing. That's a big challenge, good luck to that. Oh, uh, very good, okay, excellent. So you'll probably use the graham cracker crust, won't you? For the lemon cheesecake. Okay. All right. So um, I want you to work on the demo page. You have until 2.30 to be here working on it. If you get it done, just uh, put in the chat, I'm done, and I'll take a peek at it, make sure it all looks good, and then I'll dismiss you. But the demo page is due Friday, and then Monday of next week, um, we'll be working on some more table manners and etiquette. So that's what's coming next week. Questions in the chat, or um, you can on mic and talk to me. Otherwise, uh, two thirty, and then you'll be dismissed. Ms. Zepka. Yes. 
Oh, what would you like me to do? <laughs> I would like you to recite the Gettysburg Address. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> um, so, did you get your computer to work or you're on your phone? I'm on my phone and I, I typed on the table settings and I finished it and like I highlighted everything and yeah. went to go turn it in and it was blank. Oh, that stinks. And so that's what I'm thinking it'll do with the demo, and I don't want to do yeah. the whole demo. Right, yeah, I don't blame you. Okay, so um, you know what you need to get done. I don't know what you're going to do about your computer. I you put, Did you put um, in a help Yeah, I'm going to put in a help desk and see what they say. Okay, because you might be able to just run in really quick and switch out your cord, is what I would say. But Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you do what you need to do. You're old enough to know what that is. And um, if if you um, leave and you make sure you get your assignments in on time, I have not a problem with that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. And then, Nazaya, um, I can talk to you at the end of class if you want to kind of go over the my plate. I'd be glad to do that with you if you want to hang out for just a couple extra minutes. Henry, it's so good to see you today. I wish you'd come more often.
Does anybody have any questions before I cut you guys loose? Okie dokie. Well, you're free to go. Just make sure I get the demo page, the warm ups, um, and make sure I get the My Plate assignment. So that's what we did this week. Make sure I get that stuff. Um, Nazaya. I'm going to present my screen to you, and so you can see what's happening here. Okay. Okay, so the My Plate... Um, let me get it in presentation mode here. Okay, so ideally I wanted um, this application to work and it didn't, whoops. So um, I, what I wanted to have happen was you guys to color each section of the MyPlate and label them. Um, so what I, the alternative is that I'd like you to highlight the um, the words in the right color of food groups, like fruits are supposed to be red, proteins purple, vegetables orange, or sorry, vegetables are green, grains are orange, and dairy is blue, okay? And then serving size. And then in the my plate, they always have like little sayings, like go, uh, go whole grain. 
um, go lean with protein, you know, that kind of thing. And I think you should be able to find that on the um, myplay.gov, those little sayings or phrases. And that's what also this top part is saying with the key consumer messages. And um, you can just put them below the chart here. Okay, for this, this is a Wendy's menu items. Like these three friends went out for lunch. And what we're evaluating is, you know, what foods did they eat were in the my plate, and then some of the other things to consider is sodium, uh, sugars, and fats. So when you look at those in the Wendy's, and you just have to scroll down to find the um, amount. After you look at the spicy chicken, the fries, and the coke, is does the sodium, in your opinion, need to be reduced, increased, or is it an okay amount of sodium? And same with sugars. The, the sugars and all those foods need to be reduced, increased, or okay. And same with fats. And then I want to know what food groups are represented. So in a perfect world, I would want um, you to divide the plate up and color in the sections that were represented in the uh, diet that was eaten here. But it the, the, the part that I wanted to use would not load the day we were doing this, so I, we couldn't do that. So maybe um, either off to the side, maybe highlight with a color what food groups are represented, um, or you can highlight down here. Like if, for example, um, chicken is a protein, so maybe highlight this in um, purple. And um, if dairy wasn't represented, then just put an X in, it needs to be increased because there wasn't any dairy in the meal. Does that make sense to you about what you need to do with that? Naziya? Hi, I'm sorry, this is Naziya's mother. I'm trying to um, help her understand. Okay. Um. So, I guess the where I'm confused is so in those boxes, like I see how you break it out in the yeah. um, different categories. Yep. It, are you wanting like so? Do you want her to dissect like the spicy chicken sandwich? Like sometimes it has lettuce on it, and then the bread and that, and like write down uh, right in the boxes what piece of it it is, or is it just like X's in there? Well, if it. Yeah, so if it's like the protein and it's represented, I would just put, like I said, I'd use the color uh, pur purple because mm -hmm. it's represented there, but there's no dairy, so that would need to be increased, so i put an X there. Okay. And then I would dissect the sandwich, so you got your, you got protein, tomato, lettuce would be veggies, so I would say that there would be a Veggies are green, so I put, a, you know, I'd color this green. And then, um, but there, you know, there isn't any uh, whole grain. Like, they didn't use a whole grain bun. Okay. So, I would say that the whole grains need to be increased with an X. Okay. I think I understand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, it didn't work out as perfectly as I wanted because this thing didn't load that was supposed to because it was down. So I'm not going to be too critical on this because it wasn't exactly laid out the way I wanted it to be. So Right. You, know, gotta, do what you gotta do. That's right. So if she, if she can just, you know, do it the best she can, I'm going to make sure that I award her the points that, you know, it, for that assignment, the, the attempt was there. So. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Dun, 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 dun.